Greetings, blessings, grace, and peace. Welcome to another The Connected Podcast, the weekly Bible study of My Connected Church. This is Charles Botts, the pastor and founder of My Connected Church, and I'm thrilled, honored, excited, humbled that you would stop by and join us on another Bible study, weekly Bible study, here at My Connected Church. Thank you for downloading the Connected Podcast. Thank you for sharing it, for telling at least one other person about it. Uh, the great, great work that we're trying to do here in uh, bringing a closer relationship to God and each other uh, through examination of the Scripture and how it might impact our lives today. We are in the heart of a deep dive, a thorough review and analysis of the New Testament letters penned by the Apostle Paul, describes himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ, not by man or by the temple, but by Jesus Christ himself. And we are uh, really in the, in the middle, this actually, this Bible study will bring us to the third chapter of the letter to the Galatians. And, uh, and so we're going to jump right in. If you've been following along with us through Bible study and our Sunday sessions, our Sunday worship service, um, you are well aware that kind of the, the big overarching theme of Paul's letter to the Galatians is this idea, this notion that grace was given uh, to move us beyond the constraints and the confines of the law. And uh, that the problem was uh, in the region of Galatia, where uh, Paul had ministered previously and then sent this letter back after his time there, the problem was uh, that a group of Jewish converts to the way, to the way of Christ, um, known as Judaizers, were promoting and pushing an agenda uh, that stated any Gentile uh, that was a believer of Christ, that accepted Christ as Messiah, needed to take on the Mosaic Law. And sort of the, the, the banner, if you will, the tentpole issue, uh, kind of the, the um, if you want to say, the, the representation of accepting the Mosaic Law was that Judaizers were uh, compelling Gentile men, in particular, to be circumcised. And so Paul takes Paul takes takes great umbrage with this, and and writes this letter to to refute that. And so we looked at the first two letters. So let's jump right in. Uh, Galatians chapter three. We'll start at verse one. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Christ Jesus was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, you are now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith, just as Abraham believed God, and it was so counted to him as righteousness. And we actually started this um, in Sunday service, so so we'll we'll, we'll wrap it up um, and, and and finish it up uh, here in Bible study, verse seven. Know then that this is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham in the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So, so you know, and again, we, we talked about this Sunday, so I don't want to spend a ton of time here, but in this opening chapter, essentially what Paul is doing as a, as a scholar of the scrolls, as a student of the 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 works of of the history books, the the scrolls of the prophets, um, the the Torah. Uh, as a as a student of Torah, 
uh, Paul was well, well acquainted with the story of Abraham. And the, the key point that he makes is that the covenant that, made, that was made with Abraham, the covenant between Abraham and God, which, which is the, the forebear of the, the Israelite nation, the Hebrew people, the covenant between God and Abraham was not a covenant of law. It was a covenant of grace. It was a covenant of faith. It was not a covenant of works. The law had not been given. The Mosaic law had not been established. That comes through Moses. That comes some you know, 400 uh, uh, plus years later. Uh, is the is the the law given uh, and so the original covenant was established by faith because scripture looked down through time and I love that expression don't you love that language the idea of uh, 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 the the personification of scripture the word of God going through time and seeing you and I here and and the you know the, this this post Christ era this this dispensation of grace this period of grace that scripture looked past the prophets and looked past uh, 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 the the occupied uh, uh, Israelite territories and looked past all that and 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 sees Christ crucified and sees Christ resurrected and sees Christ ascended and sees the Holy Spirit poured out and 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 sees grace being delivered to humanity and so the original covenant the covenant that God establishes with mankind through Abraham this covenant to return to Eden to return to that place where humanity and God are in partnership and collaboration working together loving each other to to get back to that place God establishes a covenant of faith not of works of the law, of faith in the Spirit. And, and so, you know, Paul is, 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 is kind of putting this back to the, to the Gentiles, knowing that they, don't, that they are not necessarily um, students of the Torah. They don't, some of them may not even be well acquainted with the story of Abraham, but he makes the point, and he's making the point to the Gentile converts and to the Jewish converts as well, He's making the point that if you have a better way, why are you accepting the lesser way? If I came to you and I taught you through the Spirit and, and, and did signs and wonders through the Spirit by faith, why would you then reject that and pursue something that, that ties you to the, the lesser way, which are works of the flesh? Did, did I do miracles through the law? Or did I do miracles through the Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit by works of the flesh? Or did you receive the Spirit by faith in Christ? And, and so knowing how you receive the Spirit, why would you then reject that and, and pursue the law? Why would you reject the better way, the, the eternal way, the more established way? Why would you uh, reject the primary way in which God has built this relationship and, 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 ta- and, and pursue this, this lesser way. And so he goes on, um, and we'll pick it up here in verse 10. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. This is the idea, and, and you know Moses gave the law and when God established it on Sinai, is that you need to keep all the law. If you're guilty of any part of the law, you're guilty of all the law. It's, the law is an all-or-nothing proposition. You keep all of it, or you've kept none of it. You, you, you all may, may remember that. Verse 11, Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Again, the promise of Abraham was a covenant of faith. And so we become heirs. We, we become 
uh, adopted into uh, the covenant of Abraham because it's a covenant of faith. So why would we even consider the law? The law is, is, is taking a step back. The law is taking a step outside of uh, this, this path of righteousness and faith that God has, has laid. Verse 15, to give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring, Notice that, underline that, highlight that. It's, the, it's a single word, offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is, watch this, Christ. So, so here, Scripture is not even talking about Isaac and your offspring, who is Christ. Verse 17, this is what I mean, the law which came 430 years afterward, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, and so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it is no longer, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. So, you know, Paul is, Paul is, 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 is making this argument a couple different ways. He's, He's making it an argument kind of based on uh, his reputation, um, uh, uh, based on his, his, his presence, his relationship with them prior. Um, uh, the Greek word for that kind of uh, uh, communication, that kind of uh, uh, argument style would be ethos. Um, he's, he's going the, the pathos route now where he's appealing to logic. And he's using logic to make this argument. And he's saying... Look, the, the, the law was not the promise. The law came 430 years after the promise. The promise was made to Abraham and the promise was made to Abraham's offspring. And we immediately sort of think about Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, where God says, I'll establish a covenant with your offspring. And, and we think... He's got to be talking about Isaac. And, and truthfully, up until I started to study this passage, whenever I thought about the Abrahamic covenant, I always thought about Isaac and then Jacob, and then Jacob's 12 sons that became the 12 tribes of Israel. I never thought about the Abrahamic covenant being di- directly with Jesus. I always equated Jesus as being a recipient and part of the covenant because Jesus is in Abraham's lineage. And so because Jesus was a Jew, he's part of the covenant and part of the promise. I did not, until I started to study this, I did not make that connection. And in fact, the four accounts of Jesus's life and teaching, the writers Matthew and Mark, in multiple stories refer to Christ as the son of David as evidence of his messiahship. And, and so I always thought that, you know, it was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 sons, tribe of Judah, David, uh, uh, you know, is, is of the tribe of Judah and, and Christ is a descendant of David and, and God made the promise to David that a son will never leave the throne. And so Christ is an heir to David as king um, a, a, you know, both natural king and, and spiritual king, and it and it did not occur to me that in chapter seventeen of Genesis that when God is referring to Abraham's offspring, He's referring to Christ. This is the first time I can remember Christ being linked directly to Abraham. As many times as I've read Galatians, I I, I I've either read over that or it just has not jumped out at me that the 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 offspring is Christ. And so God was thinking about what God had to do in coming to earth in the form of a human, Jesus, even before the law was given. Even before the law was given, God was preparing the better way 
and establishing that with Abraham. So when the law fell short, God could be free with the Holy Spirit because the covenant had been established previously with Abraham, a covenant of uh, 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 of faith, uh, 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 a covenant of the Spirit through faith. Let me say that again because it, it was a little choppy. Even before the law and the shortcomings of the law, God established a better way for humanity in the Abrahamic covenant. And God establishes that covenant with Abraham and ultimately himself in the form of a human, Jesus called the Son of God. And so when God establishes the covenant with Abraham and his offspring, God's establishing the covenant with Abraham and himself, Jesus, who's God in the flesh, come to earth. And so before the law has a chance to show us how woefully inadequate our works are, God establishes a better covenant of faith. And so when the law falls short and Christ comes to, to, to fulfill the law and redeem the promise, God is now able to liberally pour out the Holy Spirit upon all through the covenant of Abraham and Jesus, which had been established thousands of years prior. Y- y'all need to get excited about the Holy Spirit and the grace of God given through Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm teaching right now. I don't know if y'all know this. I don't know if y'all are catching it, but I am teaching right now. All right, so let's wrap this thing up. Let, let's, let's wrap up uh, uh, chapter three. Let's wrap up Bible study for this week. Verse 19, why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. So, you know, Paul is settling that before that has an opportunity to even come up. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Read, let's look at verse 22 again. It's important. Get that. Highlight that. Circle that. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin. The law imprisoned everything under sin. So that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. The law demonstrates how full of sin we are. Because the law codifies for us, the law demonstrates for us our inability to maintain our own righteousness. And so the scripture imprisons everything in sin. Because we cannot find righteousness through our own works. Because our own works are sinful. But the promise of Jesus Christ brings life. Verse 23. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. In in Jesus' name. I mean, say, you know, what, 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 what do you want to say about that? All right. So the word guardian here, uh, verse 24. N.T. Wright uh, has a, has a, uh, a course, a Bible study 
um, on Galatians. And N.T. Wright appeared on a podcast on YouTube. Uh, the title of the podcast um, is N.T. Wright on the Book of Galatians and Ethnic Identity. And right about the 14-minute mark, um, N.T. Wright uh, translates the word guardian there to the Greek word um, pinagegos. Pinadegos. And what a what a Pinadegos is, is it's a it's a guardian, um, it's a guide, it's almost a custodian. This is a slave. This is a slave that would escort uh, Greek boys to school every day. Um, and, and and it was a position of actually some esteem. Uh, because you were uh, the authority for that boy on his way to school. You were responsible for making sure that the boy got to school every day. Now, you were still a slave, but what's interesting here, what, what, what's, what's so important to catch, is that the boy was still heir to the father's inheritance. The boy still outranked the slave, but in this capacity, the slave had authority over the boy because the boy was not yet a man. The boy was not yet full grown. And so the slave, oh, y'all got to get this. The slave had authority over the, over the boy until the boy became a man. And Paul describes the law as our guardian, as the slave that led us to grace so that we could receive the promise when we were of full age, when we reached adulthood. And so the Pinegagos is a trustworthy slave, an honorable slave. This is a position of esteem. But a slave nonetheless. And fell short of the glory of grace that was to come. So the law was our guardian that brought us to Christ. N.T. Wright says it another way. Uh, uh, the, the space shuttle cannot get to orbit on its own. A space shuttle has these huge... Uh, 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 a skyscraper-like uh, booster rockets that it's strapped to. And the booster rockets take the space shuttle beyond our atmosphere. And once we are beyond, once the shuttle, once the, 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 the space shuttle is beyond Earth's atmosphere, then the booster rockets fall off. Come on, people of God. The law was our booster rocket. The law brought us to Christ, but once Christ came, we don't need the law anymore. We don't need to be bound by works anymore because now we are cruising at an altitude where we are in the space and the freedom and the grace provided through Christ Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. The boys of the household could not leave the house without their guardians, without their escorts. They may have been heirs to the promise. They may have been uh, uh, on their way to receive the inheritance, but they had not yet received it. They were not yet of age. And so the slave was their responsibility until such time that they had reached that age. Now, what's interesting is in Roman culture, that age is determined by the father. Many of you are familiar with, with the Jewish custom of the bar mitzvah, the bar mitzvah and the bat mitzvah uh, for, for young women. And so when a Jewish boy turns 13, uh, he, he has his bar mitzvah, and that's the official ceremony where the, the boy is entering manhood. That there's a chronological time and, and similar with the Grecians. That there was a, a defined chronological time where the, the boy was designated no longer a boy and was moving into manhood. 
For for Romans, that was not the case. For Romans, there was a ceremony, but it was fairly arbitrary. It was determined by the Father. And so we know that God in his design had a time. And so the law was the slave that guarded over the Jews until such time as God said they're ready and Christ was sent and grace came. And so now every one of us that accepts Christ is heir to the promise of grace and we are no longer bound by the works of that would bring about salvation through the flesh. Salvation comes by faith and faith alone. Family, I am so grateful again for your time and attention, for your investment and your effort, your energy, and what we're doing here. I'm so thankful that you continue to tune in week after week and participate in our Bible study. Uh, uh, Please... Let somebody know of the, the value, the benefit of the Connected Podcast and uh, how they too can, can grow in their relationship with God or build a relationship with God if they don't have one already. Um, in the meantime, if we can do anything to, to help, support, if we can pray for you, if we can encourage you, please reach out. Uh, we're on all the major social media platforms. Please visit our website, myconnectedchurch.com. Fill out an information card. We'd love to follow up with you um, and help you to continue to build your relationship with Christ Jesus. Family, we appreciate you again. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay in this fight for your faith. God bless you, family.